Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. My name's Matt, and today we're going to review Gun Honey Blood for Blood number one. And before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, commenting, it really helps me out and lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. All right, we got the cover here for Gun Honey Blood for Blood number one. It is a Titan comic, and it is written by Charles R. Dye, and the art is by Ang Hor Kang. And we start off in Montana, where the owner of this house has been assassinated by this woman. And while she's trying to get away, they confront her, and they have a big shootout. We see that she leaves a gun in this library, seemingly on purpose. Then we get to Malaysia, where we meet our main character for this book. Her name is Joanna Tan, and she is some sort of agent or gun for hire. And she is told by this man named Brooks, who is her friend that this gun can be traced back to her. So it seems like someone's trying to set her up and frame her for murder. So not having any other leads, Joanna takes Brooks to the maker of that gun, who lives pretty close to her in Malaysia. And Brooks is surprised that this is just a regular gun shop owner and not some kind of secret gun supplier for spies or something. So once they talk to him, Joanna asks if he remembers who he made that gun for. And the gun maker begins to tell her that it's someone in North Dakota, that's all he can kind of remember, but he needs to go check his paperwork. And right as he's about to go inside and do that, someone murders him right in front of them. And that's where we're going to stop it. I don't want to spoil anything else. So this comic is actually the second volume of a series called Gun Honey. I did not read the first volume yet. And this is one of the first hard case crime comics that I've checked out. And I got to say, the writing was pretty solid. I've read a couple of Charles R. Dye's crime novels, and they're pretty good. So I had high hopes of his writing in this, and I think he did a really good job. It seems like he was actually writing for this medium, which is good. And this being the first issue of the second volume, he had a lot to do here. He had to fit in the introduction of this character, Joanna Tan, and also get you caught up on what happened in the previous volume. So you wouldn't be lost because this one seems to tie into the storyline from the first volume a bit. But Ardai did a good job tying it all together without making it too confusing or too exposition heavy. The art in this book is just okay to me. There wasn't anything that really stood out or was super special, but there wasn't anything bad either. It just did its job. So if you like crime and noir comics, this one's definitely for you. I enjoy that genre, and this was definitely a solid entry. So I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 out of five. And if you saw anything you like, definitely go pick that up at your local comic book store, and we'll see y'all in the next one.